this episode. What are we doing? We're finishing the engine. Yep. Fixing it up. But some of the parts are wrong, huh? <laughs> Dang it! And we are cutting up the 78. This is all... It's all out of there. Yep, gone, gone. Because we are fixing all the rust and crash damage on the cab. Right, Roni? Mm -hmm. Are you a grease monkey? Mm -hmm. Nice. This happens. <laughs> and beat on this guy a little bit but you know I questioned whether I was gonna have to do a whole bedside I really don't think so okay if this truck wasn't this truck it might make sense to do a whole bedside because I've got the damage here from when it got hit by a dump truck rust here also rust down at the bottom but mm -hmm. This truck has a lot of sentimental value, not only to me, but to my brothers, my wife, my dad. Um, yeah, it was a big part of all of our lives for a lot of years, and I never should have let it go. But So, I am going to reuse as much of the original sheet metal as I possibly can. Now, I had hoped this cap corner... I don't know, I might be able to push some of it out. It's probably going to need a whole cab corner though. Obviously it needs inner and outer rockers. I'm going to push that out as much as I can before I cut anything else out. So then we know where we're at. So next on the body work, you'll see me brace up this door frame and I'm going to get a port of power and start pushing this floor back out and straightening it out so that I can put in rockers and a floor patch. Okay, I'm going to try to film this without maiming myself, but 
Got my straight off of eBay Vivor four ton porta power. One foot against the frame rail. And this little guy is against the farthest crushed in part here. So we're gonna work that first and then probably this and then this corner. So first time doing this, wish me luck. I'll set you up on the tripod. Wow, that's incredibly effective. I suppose what I'll do is keep pushing until this is roughly, I don't know, I'm winging it here. But my plan is to straighten this out as much as I can before I cut any of the floor stuff out. This stuff is all gonna get cut out and replaced. Oh yeah. Popping, popping creaking noise lets you know that you're doing the right things. Well, we'll push, we'll push as much as we can, then we'll hammer. Sound good? Sounds good. See this crease right here? It's where it's all crinked up from this all getting shoved in. So I got my port of power down there. So you just watch this region right here. Check this out. Can you see it going down? We might be out of throw. But did you see this like flatten out? No? Okay, you might have to rewatch the video, but... Okay. Okay, that's all I needed. Okay. Okay, so that's not where our cut's going to be. You can see we have this much cab corner all the way to the end. That's more like exploratory surgery. So I don't think we're going to save any of the cab corner. I think up here, obviously, we're going to have to save it because I don't think anybody makes that. But you can see what we got going on here is this is pushed back into the B pillar and the B pillar is kind of folded over it. So two different things going on. So my big plan here 
is to get this opened up enough that I can actually push on the B pillar itself, push it back out forward where it should be, and then we will figure out how much more we're gonna cut out, straighten it out, and start welding stuff back in. Um, still don't wanna cut the rockers out yet, because I wanna get everything as straight as I can, brace up the door frame, and then cut the rest of the stuff out so that the door frame doesn't shrink up on itself. That's my plan anyway. So let's play count the 78 parts around the shop first. Here's the biggest collection of them, okay? New parts there, new parts there, um, exhaust, uh, this, um, some sheet metal down there. Oh, there's a door, there's the bed, hood and tailgate, random cooling slash engine parts, muffler, uh, bell housing, uh, grill, mm -hmm. and there is the engine back there, which is the original 400 that I rebuilt like 20 years ago. So, as you can see, uh, there is no small amount of work to be done here in uh, about a week. <sighs> Trying to take it one day at a time. So, today's mission is starting to cut this out. So, I have it firmly braced up, and I've pulled it as straight as I can, I believe, with everything still being intact. So it is time to cut some of this cab corner out of here. We're probably going to end up cutting more later, but sneak up on it because you can always cut more off. You can put some back on, but it's a pain in the butt. So we're going to cut that off and we're going to try to push this B pillar back forward until this is a little bit more correct. crunchy stuff.
Okay, it's gonna get real loud for a minute. This isn't my usual cinematic quality because we're in a hurry. So I drilled all the spot welds on this bottom corner piece right there. Um, I didn't drill up here. We're gonna cut it down here and try to save this part. So we're just cutting out where it's bent and mangled. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take the air chisel and peel all of this off. And then I'm gonna cut this right here because where this is kind of crinked down for this piece to go over, the new uh, rocker panel doesn't have that. The new rocker panel is just a formed piece that is like the way it is right here. You cut it to length and use what you use. So we're gonna try to use both ends out here of the rocker We'll see how it goes. Like I said, cut not as much as you think you need and keep cutting more until you're happy. Don't cut off too much and then have to redo everything. This is going to be very loud. Air chisels are your friend when you're working on old cars. Also, get you a quick release chuck. Just that easy. Just that easy. Said, old man, you're gonna freeze to death. Let me drive you to the mission. He said, boy, if you'd left me alone, right now I'd be fishing. Now, see now this is so floppy. See where this is bent here? It's got a little crink in it. I can just straight up do that. So, let's clean this up and 
see what we got. Because, yeah. I think that's as much as I want to cut out. Obviously, the floor here, I'll have to make a patch for right there, but let's get this scienced out first. Probably next, let's uh, work on the B pillar now that we've taken all the strength out of everything. Let's cut off these damn screws before I injure myself on them. I'm going to scratch my head a little bit and we'll be back. Okay, mocking her up here finally. And this inner rocker is fitting pretty nice, but I got to looking at my rocker repair panel. Um, and this guy appears to be a slip over, which I don't know if it said that when I ordered it, but it's probably meant to go over a rusty rocker. Um, my, rock, my rocker wasn't rusty. As you can see, it's completely mangled, inner and outer. So that repair does not have this piece on the inside. So I think the smart play here would be to see if they actually make a rocker repair panel outer rocker that is meant to butt up to that so that way I have that joint all the way across just like factory Where? right there Mario in the middle? yep Roni's gonna video me while I knock the pilot bearing into the engine. This is the bearing that supports the end of the, the transmission input shaft. Just gonna knock this in with a socket till it seats. That could definitely probably fit tighter, but. She's bottomed out in there, so. You don't want to hammer on this actual bearing part right here. You want to hammer on the solid outer bushing. So that's why I didn't use like a bearing driver because it would have smushed that all up. And sorry if you can't hear us. Just... Sorry if you can't hear us clearly because the storm. Storm's coming. Hey Roni, you gotta go like this. You gotta say, storm's coming. Say that, okay? See, and then I'll go, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, let's flip this up. So, a protective burn kit, and we're gonna put the motor mounts on. Okay, Roni had a question real quick. What was it? Why do I stop shaking it? Oh, uh, you shake it till it doesn't rattle anymore. What? All right. Whoa, that sounds real bad. 
God, is that you? The people at Jeff's Bronco Graveyard shorted us on the hardware that we paid extra for for these mounts. So we had to dig out an old bolt per side moving along. Um, and also, you'll notice these welds where the tabs go through look different than these ones. Yeah, that's because this side wasn't welded. Um, so I had to go ahead and weld that myself, which is always good when you paid like 150 bucks for those. Oh, I would not want to be an employer right now. I'm sure they're having the same issue everybody else where your employee pool just sucks because it's like, you got a pulse? Hired. Huh. Yep, go ahead. Yep. So, squeeze. Uh, is there a malfunction here? Oh, you gotta squeeze a little harder. Should be able to, oh, don't get your hand in, oh my god. Don't get your hand in front of it, did you get it? Okay, let me see this. Look, don't be scared of it. See, just a, enough little squirts to get her covered all the way. Sorry. Good. Then when we're done, we turn it upside down because that cleans it out. Okay, we'll give it a few and then we'll put some of this on there. Well, aren't you going to tell the people what we're going to do? What are we doing? We're going to put motor mounts on the engine. Okay. So... We need to put, we're going to put a little thread locker on the bolts and then Roni's going to bolt them on there, right? Okay. Go ahead, wherever you want. I don't think those ones are cute. Both of them? Mm -hmm. Okay, get her in there. Okay, get your other one started there. That one that's in your hand. Okay. Are you going to do that today or? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right there. Perfect. Here you go. Okay, go ahead. Oh gosh. Can you hold it on there? Uh huh. Okay, well, don't let it buck you off again. Okay. Okay, give it a zip. Okay, well, that's good. Don't twist her off, okay? <laughs> and just give them a zap. You don't have to hold it down after they're tight. Okay, give it a zip. Stop. Okay, other one. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Good. Okay, now we got the big bolts. I'm going to show you how to do the side over there, okay? And then you'll do the other side. So come over here. I'm good. Do you know which way we put motor mount bolts when they're going in the car? No. Oh, you film me. Okay. So these guys will go into the frame. So you've got to go in like this. Well, not that close, but back up, back up. Whenever we're putting motor mount bolts in that go through like this, we put them in from the front to the back. Do you know why? Because which way does the truck or car go down the road? All way. Yeah, so this is the front, right? Mm -hmm. So if the nut vibrates and falls off, if you put them in this good. way, hopefully it stays put and doesn't fall out, okay? I lost my nuts. Nut and washer goes on the back. And we're not gonna tighten them, we're just gonna snug them to the point where this guy will still move. I don't know if they gave you a long enough frickin' bolt on there. Maybe they did. So by the time you tighten this down, the bolt should at least be flush with the end of that nylock nut, which some of the hardware leaves some to be desired. Okay, 
Your turn. Okay, show me what you got, White Shadow. Um, yep. <laughs> Gotta get the hole lined up. Okay. Uh, is that coming in from the front? Right. Right. Good man. Is this the right? Okay. You might have to wiggle that middle part a little bit. There you go. Mm, which one do you think? Uh, which way does that go? The letters go facing out. See the letters? Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Okay. So we're just going to snug this enough that these guys still move but there's a little uh so they'll kind of stay where we put them there's a little piece. okay other one about like that boy i really hope that bolt's going to be long enough it doesn't really look like it is. So, if it's not long enough, the nylock nut doesn't do nylock things. So, okay, what else were we gonna do? We were gonna be showing you how to install a clutch on the engine, but L&L sent us the wrong flywheel with our order. We'll see how they'll handle that. I know for sure I ordered the right one, so. Um, they sent us an internal balance flywheel, which is for the 78 and older 460s. This is a 79 and up. It is an external balance. So it didn't look right because it's symmetrical with the holes all the way around. Um, one for an external balance should either have some more cast into it, which it's billet, it's not cast, but it should probably have some holes drilled out 180 degrees offset from where the the counterweight is on the crankshaft and it didn't it didn't look right So I checked it out check the part number. It's wrong Make sure you check stuff like that because if you put the wrong balance flywheel on there You're gonna have a heck of a vibration and if you keep running it like that You're gonna ruin your main and rod bearings in your engine. So anyway parts showed up So I wanted to just show you real quick Here's our inner rocker from Tabco took it off the truck and here is the outer rocker repair section that came from Tabco which is not going to work because as you can see it's not a complete rocker. I'm going to show you how all this goes together. Okay me and Roni are going to show you how this all goes together. Come here Rones. Okay so this is the inner rocker which also, go over to that side please. Can we see this? Yeah. This also ends up being, this is the inner cab corner piece. So, can you hold that end for me? Okay, keep it from tipping over. Here's the difference between the actual full outer rocker, which is here and the repair thing, which is just meant to slip over your old one. So how this goes, inner rocker, outer rocker, okay, let this come up past you. Watch your hand there. Okay, slide her up against there. The outer rocker goes against like so. I'm not sure, something like this. Okay, now hold those two pieces together over there, bud. Like sandwich them together. Yep. Okay. And then your cab corner. Oh, 
Oh, jeez. All right, let's do it laying down. Let's try it laying down. So hold this. Sorry. It's okay. Hold that on there. So that goes like so, and then your outer cap corner. <laughs> Why? It needs to come that way, I think. Yep, because it goes all the way in there. So we've got some disagreements here between our stuff, but this is this goes into the outer cap corner like this here, and then. This is the edge of our door frame, which goes like so. Here, let's try to stand her up. So this is how this all fits together. So now, in the next video, we're figuring out how to fit all this stuff in. Um, what do they need to do, Roni, if they like our style? What do we tell the people to do at the end of videos always? Subscribe. And like and, and even share and even subscribe again. again. Subscribe seven times. No, just kidding. Don't if you click subscribe again, it unsubscribes you, so don't do that. <laughs> it's not looking at this point like the 460 is gonna go on the dyno. I will get it on a chassis dyno, which this is a stick truck, it's a stick shift. So it will be a more accurate number than if it was going to have the automatic like it was going to in Vicky. The support from the channel to get it engine, engine dyno just isn't there. So we're not going to spend that money and have it put us behind on projects. We want to drive this sucker with the 460 in it, huh, Roni? Mm -hmm. And you know what else we want to do? Four-wheel drive burnouts, huh? Because that's what you can do when you got 500 horsepower in a four-wheel drive. So we'll get on a chassis dyno. We will figure from there how much the engine made. But anyway, we are stuck into this thing pretty much until it's done. Now my flywheel situation is not good and that's probably gonna hold me up. So what we will probably do is I have sourced a donor vehicle for a project. It's down at my dad's in Wyoming. So when we get to a stopping point on this where we can't do anymore, we're gonna head down there and go work on that and get it ready to be a donor vehicle. And Roni has already named it. What did you name it? Crusher meat. Crusher meat. Because <laughs> we're not going to fix it. We're just stripping its guts out and then crusher meat, huh? All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Stay for the next one, huh? Subscribe. Subscribe, dang it. And watch some videos and share them with your friends. We need to get that. We got rookie numbers on view counts. We need to get those view counts up, don't we? All right. See you next time. Give me a give me a see you next time, Roni. See you next time and subscribe. <laughs>